But you'll recall, I don't know, about a week or two ago, three weeks ago, we played a clip of this guy, um, Bregman. Rutger Bregman. Rutger Bregman. He is a Danish history professor. And he was at Davos. And it didn't get the same coverage as... um, uh, what was it? Wh- who's the first guy? We- Anand Jardardus. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. He's, Jir- he's actually Dutch. Oh, Dutch. Okay. Uh, and the uh, it didn't get the same coverage, but I think we even included in the cl- uh, clip. But he uh, made a very similar point where he was like, you know, we're out here at Davos, and they're talking about all these different things. And the, and the one thing that nobody's paying attention to is, is taxes. Rich need to pay more taxes. Period. And... So that caused quite a stir, and this is where Tucker Carlson's veneer that Jamie was just alluding to uh, gets ripped off, where he pretends like, you know, Tucker wants to have this, is projecting, is trying to develop an image that makes it look like he's taking on the establishment. Because he knows no matter what happens to Trump, there's going to be a bunch of Trump voters out there who are going to be disaffected. And these are the guys that he's applying, you know, he's, and, and make no mistake about it, Tucker's playing a role. And he is, it's not completely disingenuous because he's also, at the heart of this role is sort of the same thing that I think Pat Buchanan was running on 30 years ago, which is a fundamentalist, a, a religious fundamentalist worldview that sees some elements of capitalism as profane because they undercut the religious worldview that they want. And so he's able to talk a good game about this stuff unless it starts to dig and cut a little bit too close to the bone. Yeah. And so he brings on uh, this guy Bregman, Rutger Bregman, after uh, Be- Bregman's, um, sort of, I guess, uh, his uh, his moment at Davos. And Bregman does something that maybe he could do it because I think he was, was actually, um, he was in Europe, I believe, when he was doing this. He wasn't in studio. I don't know where he was, but he had access to the feed in a way that most people don't. And somebody was recording it with his phone. And we had noticed this before we left for vacation that Bregman had, had tweeted at Tucker Carlson, how come you're not going to play the interview that we did? And we're wondering what it was. Well, uh, now this obtained this footage and shows how the full segment between Bregman and, um, and Tucker Carlson went. And we're going we're gonna to play it. Um, Sorry now this, but this is stuff is uh, more important than just the, uh, accruing the hits. Quite a conference, and no one's allowed to speak about water. <laughs> That's one of the great moments, maybe the great moment in Davos history. Rutger Bregman is the author of Utopia for Realists, and he joins us now. Mr. Bregman, I, I, I can't stop laughing just because of that. And, and part of that makes me wonder, are you the first person ever to note that people are flying private to talk about global warming and that none of them mentioned tax avoidance. Has anyone ever said that before at Davos that you know of? Pause it, pause it for one second. So now on this, you cannot see Tucker on it. All he is is in the studio looking at the feed that's going. So you just hear Tucker. Sure, I'm not an expert on Davos history, but it is a bit hypocritical, isn't it? Pause it. I just like you can hear like I can see Tucker. There's obviously there's a picture here of him, but I could see Tucker really enjoying this and thinking like, oh, my God, this is cool for me. I found this guy and I'm totally on top of this. Has he always been this much of a speed freak? Take it off to you. What was the what response did you get? Uh, I mean, they were not very happy with me, but I'm just just a, I think a, a, a random Dutch historian who's basically saying whatever on around the globe is thinking, you know, the vast majority of Americans for years and years now, according to the polls, 
uh, including Fox News viewers and including Republicans, are in favor of higher taxes on the rich, you know, higher inheritance taxes, higher top marginal tax rates, uh, higher wealth taxes. It's all really mainstream. But no one's saying that at Davos, just as no one's saying it on Fox News, right? And I think the, the, the explanation for that is quite simple, is that most of the people in Davos, but also here on this channel, have been bought by the billionaire class. You know, you're not meant to say these things. So I just went there and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to say it, just as I'm saying it right here on this channel. Well, what was interesting, I thought, about what you said, was you noticed something. I mean, many people have called for higher taxes. Well, not on this channel, is it? I mean, almost all of the pundits on this channel for years have been against higher taxes, right? Even though the, the vast majority of Americans is in favor of it. I mean, I would, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it would be interesting to know how many hours of Fox you've watched, but I'm interested in what you said about mm -hmm. tax avoidance. Pause it. Hold on. Now, it's see, Tucker realizes, like, at first he tries to ignore where he was going and then he realizes like okay uh, uh and then you can hear him like i i i i i i i i and he as he as it's as he's starting to realize like oh this is going sideways and how am i going to bring this back i'm just going to have like a little bit of like shot across the bow because most of the the guests that they have on that tucker's not sure of this is the way of tucker like corralling this is like this i sent the sheepdog out to push him back in line and apparently it's not going to work. I mean, I would, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it would be interesting to know how many hours of Fox you've watched, but I'm interested in what you said mm -hmm. about tax avoidance. So yeah. you, just because someone faces a specific tax rate does not mean that person pays that tax mm -hmm. rate at all. I don't think Netflix, for example, paid any taxes last year mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So what would you do specifically to make Netflix. certain that this class of people pays what they're supposed to pay. Well, it's about multiple things. So we should really crack down on tax paradises and on tax avoidance. That's a major issue. But it's also about having higher taxes. So in the 1950s, for example, in the 1960s, in the golden age of capitalism, as historians called it, we had top marginal tax rate for the very rich uh, of about, you know, 70, 80, 90 percent actually under under Eisenhower, the Republican president. And this was also, you know, one of the best periods in American history. Same same is true for the UK and, and the rest of Europe. Um, so as a historian, for me, it's all not, you know, it's it's really not rocket science. We should go just go back to to simple and straightforward solutions from the past from the past. Right. But this country was sustained. And since you're a historian, I guess you would know this sustained mm -hmm. by an industrial economy at the time that was broad and deep. That, mm -hmm. that created a middle class, that doesn't exist anymore. So it's an entirely different economy. I wish it did exist. Oh, wow. Well, but that's not, no, that's not really work, an issue. I mean, would work the same way with an entirely different economy? Well, I, th I think it would. I mean, uh, America is still pretty much the most powerful country in the world, right? So um, if, it, if it really would want to, it could easily crack down on, uh, on tax paradises. But the thing is, I mean, you guys have brought into power a president that doesn't even want to show its own tax well, returns. Uh, I mean, who knows how many billions he has hidden in the Cayman Islands or in Bermuda. Um, so I think the issue really is, is, is one of corruption and of people being bribed and of not being, you know, not talking about the real issues. Uh, what the family, you know, what the Murdochs basically want you to do is to scapegoat immigrants instead of talking about tax avoidance. <laughs> so I'm glad you're now finally raising the issue. But that's what been been happening for the past couple of years. Uh huh. And I'm taking I'm taking orders from the Murdochs. Is that what you're saying? No, I mean it doesn't work that directly. But I mean, you've been part of the Cato Institute, right? You're, you've been a senior fellow there for years. You've been you've been taking their dirty money. They're funded by cock billionaires, you know. Wait, why don't you tell me how it does work? Well, it works by you taking their dirty money. It's as easy as that. I mean, you are a millionaire funded by billionaires. That's what you are. And I'm glad you now finally jumped the bandwagon, you know, of people like Bernie Sanders and AOC. But you're not, you're not part of the solution, uh, Mr. Mr. Carlson. You're part of the problem, actually. AOC, wait, but can I just say, and... It's true, right? <laughs> it's true, right, that all the, all the anchors... All the anchors on Fox. You would have to be a 
they're all millionaires. How is this possible? Well, it's very easy. You're just not talking about certain things. It doesn't even fuck doesn't even play where you are. It doesn't play where you are. <laughs> well, have you heard of the internet? <laughs> I can watch things whatever I want, you know? <laughs> I have, actually. I, I, I can't say I'm a great fan of your show, but I do my homework when you invite me on your show. So, I mean, you're probably not going to air this, uh, but I went to Davos to speak truth to power, and I'm doing exactly the same thing right now. You might not like it, but you're a millionaire funded by billionaires, and that's the reason why you're not talking about these issues. But I am talking about this issue. Yeah, only now. Come on, you jumped the bandwagon. You're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. Why don't you go f*** yourself, you tiny brain. And I hope this gets picked up. Because you're a moron. I tried to give you a hearing, but you were too f***ing annoying for me. Uh, you can't handle the criticism, can you? <laughs> That's how you do Fox. Oh, you have to go on expecting to never be invited back, and you've done it right. The the tricky part is it's hard to get that type of footage. Like, I think you need to be, like, an American, in most American stringers, essentially, places where you go in, they either do not have that monitor available, or it's conceivable to me there could be another person, I, I'm presumably... That was not him uh, video, uh, although it's conceivable to me that he also videotaped it after the fact that they ran back the video because, um, you know, it's different in 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 a foreign country. Uh, but if you get the right person. Uh, but that was pretty sweet. And you know what? Here's here's what I'm going to say. I don't think Tucker Carlson hoped that it get picked up. <laughs> He said it, but I don't. I don't actually believe that that was the case. Yeah, but he comes off so not owned in that video, and definitely not mad. But it, that's the thing too: is it got under his skin so badly. He was so because he was so excited up front. Like, I have circle. I have squared the circle. Like, I have been able to bring it together. I got the guy who criticized power at Davos, and this is how, with my jujitsu, I I turn it into some type of like. Uh, pro, you know, women need to stay in the kitchen type of uh, white people are great um, uh, narrative. And he just got faced. That was, that was really a work of art, I have to say. Very impressive. All right. We